All right. So, Romney declares victory, and we haven't even counted all the delegates yet. Uh, the number we're trying to get to is 1,155. Romney is nowhere near 1,155. He might, might have 650. Probably around 600. Ron Paul probably down there around two, 300. And, but we haven't counted Texas. We haven't counted uh, California. And, of course, the mainstream media parrots it. He is the presumptive candidate. He just won on voting machines. Texas. Is this the first time we've had this? Are, you, are we new here? Is this our, is our first year as a country, or is this the same process every four years? Okay, so no, it's either the Democrats or the Republicans that are going through this process of uh, primaries and caucuses and so forth. Right now, it's the Republicans. And uh, no, he hasn't won. And no, he's not the presumptive candidate. Ron Paul hasn't conceded, and guys like me are never going to vote for Romney. It's as simple as that. It's not, this is not a difficult concept. We're not going to get behind Romney and, and, and you know, Ben Swan talking about, oh, they're going to win, win the battles but lose the war. They want to lose the war. That's the whole point. It's the same thing as Kerry. It's the same thing as Bush and Kerry, the two skull and bones guys going at it. No, they wanted Bush to win and they knew Kerry wasn't going to win. The same way they know Romney has no chance against Obama. And that if the Romney people don't get behind Ron Paul, it's going to be Obama again. Right? They've got it exactly backwards. This is what they do. They're all pretty, and they got their hair and makeup, and they know that because they're pretty that you believe them a little bit more than you'd believe a guy that looks like me that doesn't have my hair and makeup perfectly you know, put together, and I'm not wearing a coat and tie, and I don't have, uh, you know. <sighs> it's pretty simple, guys. The, the whole point of, of uh, the mainstream media, and see, and this is what... It blows my mind even more. There's people now that are in the Ron Paul campaign that are amazed. They're amazed that they steal votes. And they're amazed and shocked and saddened and disgusted. <laughs> see some of their comments. That, you know, this is how it's cut. And the mainstream media doesn't tell the truth. And it doesn't give you... Really? So you just figured this out, huh? And you, you think they told you the truth about 911? You think they told you the truth about uh, Iraq? They think they told you the truth about Vietnam? You think they tell you the truth about any damn thing? It's a propaganda machine. They can't even get the number, simple addition, they can't count to 1,155. And I'm certainly not voting for a guy that can't do simple math. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, Crude Hunter Moen's House of Math, this is, this is the whole point. There's links down there. Um, but the idea is, yeah, that's exactly what's going on. They're cheating. They, they, they lie into the camera, and they tell you exactly not what's happening. They don't tell you about vote fraud. They don't tell you about you know, how the fact that, okay, you go down to the polls and you have your vote stolen. And then you, you go back and become a delegate. But you, you go back and what turns, what, what's turning out to be the case is that thousands, I mean, they're showing up in droves to be delegates. They're overwhelming, right? They're, becoming, they're, they're taking over the party, right? They're trying to make it sound like the Ron Paul people are doing something dirty and underhanded when actually the Ron Paul people who've been disenfranchised and have their votes stolen are actually showing up to be part of the process and uh, become delegates and so forth. And they overwhelm the system because there's so many of them. Again, if Ron... Paul didn't have the support, there wouldn't be so many people showing up to become delegates. If Romney had all the support and all these people, that, you know, the popular vote, that go down and supposedly vote for Romney, but then they don't show up to become delegates. They're not part of the process. They don't get down there and, you know, become electors and delegates. Hmm. All right? And then people are starting to figure this out. They're like, wait a minute. <laughs> It cracks me up, because this is what's been going on for the better part of five decades, probably closer to ten decades, since 1913. And then they'll bring up, right, the talking points that I hear. It's so sick of these stupid talking points. Social, before it was, uh, you know, his foreign policy. But then it turns out people are pretty, especially just having a Memorial Day, and you can see the comments and so forth, people are pretty sick of these wars and putting our soldiers in harm's way and spending our blood and treasure cheaply on foreign soil so corporations can make a buck. They're not... They're, our soldiers didn't go out there so that the FDA can, you know, raid, uh, you know, farmers and milk farmers and try to find their their client list and go door to door looking for raw milk, right? Armed FDA people, right? Food and Drug Administration, they're armed on Amish farms or, or, or you know, health co-ops. These hippies that are trying to, you know, grow organic food and, and have whole milk and, you know, and so forth that's raw and raw almonds and so no you can't have that and they're in there with guns drawn this is what our marines went off and fought for this is what you joined the navy for this is what you joined the army for um, you're, you're in the air force so that these fda fucktards can do this kind of stuff is that why you joined how about the drug war 
right? You, you join the military so that these guys can, and the DEA can go into California and other states where it's legal to have a script for marijuana. And they can arrest grandma for pot. They can arrest grandma for, for using medical marijuana, even though it's, it's legal in the state. That's what you went and that's, what, that's why you got your hitch? Or maybe you got your hitch because there ain't no jobs where you're at. And, and it was, you know, they have impoverished the nation via the Federal Reserve. And because our economy is so crappy, the only place where you had an opportunity to get a paycheck was with the United States military. Now, but is, I mean, you know, tell it like it is, folks. It's, it's, it, are you tired? Because I'm tired. Now, we just had Memorial Day. We've got thousands and thousands of guys not dying in combat but committing suicide. Right? Nobody wants to talk about this. More people dying of suicide in, our, in, our, in the ranks of our military than from combat wounds. What the hell is going on? And you guys want to pretend and wave flags and have a barbecue, right? And I'm a spoiler <laughs> if I talk about this. Nobody wants me at their barbecue talking like this, right? It's Memorial Day, right? Time to celebrate all these dead guys. Then you, right? Then we got the TSA feeling up Grandma's cooch, right? And you guys are for that? Is that what you went out and fight, right? You're standing in a free speech zone? That's what you're for? Okay, we got this guy, Ron Paul. He's had enough. Right? He understands a simple concept of you know, no direct taxes without apportionment. That's a, that's a very, very simple concept. And when we talk about social issues, there is no greater social issue than having our boys go off and fight and die for no reason. Right? So corporations can make money. So we can keep dollar hegemony in places like you know, Libya and, and uh, Iraq and so forth that would be you know, threatening our, our mighty FRN, which is not even our currency. It's the Federal Reserve's currency, which is a private corporation that is absolutely used illegal tender, you know, legal tender laws, illegal legal tender laws to enslave and entrap the American people. Because they wouldn't need the legal tender laws if the money was good. Right? Our money is not sound. Our money is not fair. Our money is backed by nothing. It's fiat. They loan it to us at interest. There is no bigger social issue than this. This is the main thing. Now, what do we got? I mean, what do we got? We've got Obama and Romney as supposedly the choices, right? You get your flavors of black or white, right? <laughs> Republican or Democrat, but it's the same animal. It's the same beast. And they're trying to say, oh, uh, Obama's stronger on social issues. What social issues? Gay marriage, right? Ron Paul's been talking about if you want to contract, you have the right to contract. You want to talk about women's rights and women's issues and access to birth control? Ron Paul was a gynecologist. So you're, you're, <laughs> I'm sorry, your argument is invalid. Because he's talking about be, having access to birth control, and he understands that women need to have birth control, right? Have, have uh, the right to their own reproductive system, right? What, what greater liberty is than that? He talks about individual liberty. That's why you see feminists for Ron Paul. That's why you see these other people for Ron Paul, right? Gays for Ron Paul. I mean, Latinos for Ron Paul. Blacks for Ron Paul. We've got all kinds of groups out there for Ron Paul. Because he is the guy that's talking about individual liberty. He's the guy that's talking about the Constitution. You want to talk about taxes? There's another social issue that affects everybody way more than gay marriage or birth control will. Everybody is affected by the tax rate. Now, if you take a look at the IRS, and this is, again, the bankers have implemented a system to enslave the populace of the United States. It works so well in the banana republics. They brought it home to the United States. And they've had the system in place for almost 100 years. We're at 99 years now. And slowly but surely, incrementally, they've made it so that they've enslaved you with debt. And they try to get you to pay taxes on income. And I'm talking about income taxes. And there is no direct tax on your income without apportionment, period. The United States Supreme Court and government has upheld this numerous times. But the average person doesn't understand that you know, USC 26 isn't positive law, and they don't even know what that means, and that it's a special law that applies to a certain class of people, and they assume that they're in that class. And if you sign a document that says you're in that class, well, you know, if I sign a document that says I'm Chinese, as far as the government concerned, I'm Chinese. <laughs> right? Simple as that. So when you do the same thing with your tax form, and so many people, they don't understand uh, anything about the tax law, they just do what they're told, and, and then people like me tell you, hey, wait a minute, they don't, they don't have a creation statute, they don't, they don't have... Uh, any authority inside the counties, uh, income, what are they taxed? What are they allowed to tax? How do you determine eight, six, section 861? Hmm, this guy named Larkin Rose actually went to jail over 861, silly guy. But anyway, so if 861 isn't the way to determine our tax, then how do we determine our tax? You know, you, you tell me, and I'll tell you what, 
I'm never going to say that I don't owe the tax because coming from mathematics, I can't prove a negative. I can't say I don't. You have to prove that I do. So uh, please, you know, here, I'll give you, uh, in fact, you know what, I'll give you power of attorney. You, here's the power of attorney and uh, you can file the forms for me and, uh, you know, just tell me what laws you're basing them on. What, what section of the IRS code or the USC code are we talking about that uh, in, in causes me to have a tax liability on my income? Anyway, uh, is there a bigger issue? There is no bigger issue. Right? Between the Federal Reserve and the IRS, these two uh, hmm, quasi-government agencies, and they're not, they're private. You start, take a good look and just read your history. The IRS is not a government agency. It doesn't even show up under Title 31 under U.S. agencies. The Federal Reserve is not a government agency. Right? The, 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 the Treasury is a government agency. The, the, the Federal Reserve is not. Their Federal Reserve note is not a dollar. Right? That is not sound money. These are issues Ron Paul is conversant with. But see, if he talk like I do, they call him a crazy person. So he talks about getting rid of the IRS. He talks about getting rid of the TSA. He talks about getting rid of the FDA and bringing the troops home and being able to balance the budget, cut a trillion dollars and actually make some serious cuts to our budget and live within our means and be able to pay for the social programs that people have become addicted to. Benefits equals slavery, my friends. So you want your Social Security, you want your Head Start, you want, well, how are we going to pay for all this? We're bankrupt and we are spending yet more money on war. And I, I, I've got more links down there, some of them. One of them is 90 minutes long with a whistleblower on 911. And talk about, you know, we could have had peace with Iran, and Iraq, excuse me, Iraq. Uh, we could have had peace with Iran also, but we could have had peace with Iraq. We could have had prosperity. And now, the people are suffering. And the reason for this is because we've gone to war, right? We've gone, we've gone to war and we've impoverished the people even further because it, we just print the money, right? Billions and billions and billions and billions billions of dollars for the Iraq war. That money could have been spent on radiation monitoring. <laughs> that money could have been spent on all kinds of things. We could have had our National Guard troops at home, spending their money at home, spending their paychecks at home, not across some, you know, in some far-flung place across the ocean. We could bring our regular army home and then, you know, the Air Force, the Marines, all of them. Spend your paycheck at home, you know, police the borders at home, right? Protect the country at home. Not, not in 150 different countries. And then we have these bankers, again, social issues. You want to talk about social issues? Uh, let's see. You got borrow $26,000, pay back $32,000, still owe $45,000, and you don't get any uh, Social Security or Medicare until you pay off your student loan. There's a social issue. Where's Ron Paul on that? Where are the other two guys on that? Doesn't matter what issue we talk about, Ron Paul falls down on the side of the people. And when it comes to sound money, freedom, and liberty, there is, no, there is no one with a record like Ron Paul has. Now, individual liberty, that's for women. Individual liberty, that's for blacks and Latinos and every other color of the rainbow, Muslims and every religion and so forth. Individual liberty. Being able to control your own destiny, control your own labor. You've got an idea for a business, you should be able to start a business. But in most places, you can't start a business because you need permits and you need, right? Because corporations don't want competition and they've made it very difficult and they try to call it public safety so that you can't, you know, go and sell a hot dog. You can't, right, on the side of the street. In Mexico, you want to buy, you know, what they call street food? No problem. Right? And it's buyer beware because maybe they've chopped up a cat and maybe they maybe that food isn't good, maybe it's not beef. It's up to you to be you know discriminate again about what you're uh, gonna get, right? And but see, and this is the thing: the street dealers that that sell food that make people sick go out of business. Simple. United States, no, we gotta have right. We couldn't have that. We we you have to get permits. You can't even sell lemonade on the side of the street, right? And like I said, they're trying to go after milk farmers. And we've got you know, 30,000 drones, and they want, to, they, are, they want to arm these drones. <sighs> and then we've got the National Defense Authorization Act, which Ron Paul never would have signed. You wouldn't have to sign a petition you know, or anything like that. It, it, it's just, it's painful. It's, it's what's going on is ridiculous, and people still can't see the clear choice between the same guy, Romney and Obama, or Ron Paul. And Romney hasn't won this thing. There's we, this thing, and, and the Ron Paul people are never getting behind Romney. He is unelectable, and that's what they want, because they want four more years of Obama, because Obama been very, very good to them, right? The 1% likes Obama, 
and for the, for the for you hippies out there to be saying, oh, we like Obama when he won't even let you grow hemp. Won't even let. All right, this comes from Manitoba. You, you can't even grow hemp. They, they, we're not even talking about marijuana and medical marijuana. We're talking about a, a plant that's useful. Anyway, it blows my mind. You've got one clear choice out there. Don't stop working for Ron Paul because the media says it's over because it ain't over, right? Get out there, work for Ron Paul, uh, become a delegate. This thing goes to the Republican National Convention, and he will be nominated.